the media contaminating relationships between men and women. That is our topic. But it's also important that when we think about the media, we're talking about the media. It was a phrase that I would use back in the day when I actually first got started. Uh, it's not a phrase I coined. It's a phrase I used when I first got started on Access TV in 2004. Don't blame the media. Be the media. And when Clyde Lewis at the time was giving me praise for doing my part, it was around that. Let's not just blame the media. Let's be the media. I'm a part of the media. Independent media, free media, but the media in general, right? It does play a role, certain elements of it, not just mainstream. That would include elements of the alternative media in which relationships are contaminated. And people are giving, given false perceptions in many cases about themselves and others. And there's very, very many different examples that I can give of this without getting lost in the details. It doesn't matter what gender or ethnicity genetic makeup a person is. There may be a program just for them to be looking at the world through a false lens and to be predisposed to be aggressive with others of their same sex or the opposite sex, but in particular, same sex over a false notion that others are getting more than them, that they are victims. And I noticed this throughout elements of our society, this victim consciousness. And I realize, having been single most of my life and went through most of my teens without a girlfriend. Literally losing my virginity was somebody bringing over his uh, promiscuous friend. Um, never really finding, right, um, women in my dating life that really loved me for me. It was literally just a physical thing during that period. And I would say that, that has a lot to do in some cases with media programming because I think that in you know, I'm not from a religious family, not even really from much of a family or a big family, but I'm not really from a traditional world, but who knows? Maybe we lived before, who knows? Maybe more than once, even though some people have had their memory totally wiped. Perhaps the wiping process didn't work completely on all of us. I think without this media demonizing the truth seeker in the way that it has, and I remember even, um, former female fan of mine that I was really attracted to for a number of years. It was like a Eve Lorgan love bite type deal. Nothing beautiful, nothing angelic about that angel back in Portland. But you tell me like my boyfriend says you're like, uh, David Korkesh, Koresh <laughs> of, of Waco, Texas. Uh, Koresh, another cult leader, Alex Yancey, another wannabe cult leader, come live with me and we will survive together. Like, I don't see any notice that I'm trying to get a bunch of people to live with me. But just because I'm concerned about the way things are going, I'd like to have a few allies, right? Nothing wrong with that. I think that we all kind of want that. And, um, but that programming that he had and that programming that others have had, even recently when someone heard that I had a YouTube channel and I talked about my AdSense collapsing and they said, don't go shoot up YouTube headquarters. Media influence. And so I do believe that left to our own devices, maybe in a different world without as much uh, media sabotage that includes alternative media and people turn to YouTube and whatnot with their angers and sexual frustrations. I mean, there are things that people aren't even like taking into the equation as to why a lot of people aren't uh, find themselves in happy relationships. And a lot of people, whether they be men or women, like to gravitate back down to these, uh, these gender warfare ideologies. And there's enough media out there, we're saturated with it, from the angry man programming that's out there, that's very unconscious, to the angry woman programming that's out there, that's very unconscious. There are two sides of the same coin. Just in the same way in which I refrain from being a Democrat or a Republican. 
just as I see myself racially as other, just as I see myself religiously as other, just as everything in my life is outside of the normal boxes that are available to us. I am my own thing. I have gone my own way. I literally have left the city. Alex has left the building and is coming to you from a 10 by 12 tiny home on the cheap, less than $3,000 invest in this particular structure earned over three months running food at a restaurant here in town two years ago. It's the different sacrifices that I've made to go my own way. And so it's important for people to understand that the media has contaminated our understanding of ourselves and others, and we are responsible for correcting that. We can't fix others. Just because we may choose to go on the spiritual path and see ourselves for what we really are and see others uh, try to see others for what they really are doesn't mean that we're not going to be coming across other members of the zombie apocalypse. It's not so much that people have uh, a, a view of superiority to another gender if they're criticizing the opposite sex and they're heterosexuals. It actually makes sense for people to talk, right? Oh, they demonetized both of those videos of mine on YouTube, right? Women have a right to criticize unconscious male behavior. Men have a right to criticize unconscious female behavior when seeking a mate and talking about what the real value systems are beyond just doing the Humpty Dumpty dance. Let's do the Humpty dance. Let's act like the hip hop wave. Yo, bo, bo. And it's just like the very fact that that is still like mating ritual behavior, just shaking that ass, twerking, things like that. It's like, what kind of a planet did I fall into? I mean, literally, people just do a bump, ginger. And, and if you didn't hear it before, you heard it here first. The links between solar maximum increase in energy and an increase in twerking videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We'll see where things go in the next decade. But yes, I do think there is a rise and fall of twerking videos and fads. And people don't shake that out. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, you can't just go, it's like a cycle, like I say. There's cycles and ups and downs. There's a period where there's more people into that booty, booty, uh, booty shaking music, booty shaking pants. Bop, 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 we're gonna procreate them babies because there's more dollar flares. But they, they don't get that. I get that. I see that. Hell, I feel like I've known that for multiple lifetimes. And I don't see any sign that this uh, world is becoming more conscious of the obvious impacts on fertility, on behavior, on migration patterns, and periods of the solar epochs or the solar cycles. To me, it's like mathematical. So why don't they teach this instead of algebra? But let's just reel it back to something that most of the audience is probably on par with. But thank you for keeping an open mind. Subscribe to this channel if you're new. There are presentations that I've given about the sun in a full serious note without getting into anything else. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Check out my ebook at alexansory.tv. You're going to see more written blogs from me on relationships, off-grid living, solar flares, geopolitics, staying sane in a world that's insane in the membrane. And I'm open to your suggestions and volunteer work. Would you like to help me build a better newsletter if my other newsletter sucks? I'm looking for all different types of help right now because it's like I'm a shooting star. And it's like, you know, we got to be our own jukebox hero. You know, it, it, it's time to go. You know, look for another descriptive word here. But it's time to go the distance. It's time to go the distance. Like we're coming up against Apollo Creed. For those of us in our own lives, motivation, moving forward, moving our channels forward, moving our relationships forward, deprogramming from what the media has done to our minds to contaminate our perception of our own value. Don't you think at times that I have to recover at times? The media can, can put out fears and demonize YouTubers and put men and classify men into different stereotypes. Other people in the alternative media can also do the same thing based on who had sex with who way back when, and basically things that are out of my control, out of people's control, but it actually still matters more first to some people before what your actual character is and nature. How did we get there? Well, in this post 9-11 world, a lot of things have changed. There's been a great disturbance to the human force, to the true rom romance and relationship between men and women. And so the contamination of the media, going back to promoting war, you're promoting death and decay, the destruction of families. Not you, you personally, but, you know, the machine itself. What the media machine 
And again, read my article from 2005. I'm not a friend of Jeff Rents, but he found it in 2005, posted on his website. You can find it there. Uh, Mass Media through Network TV. Are Your Thoughts Your Own? By Alex Ansari, December 2005. It's eight pages. I sat down and wrote that over the course for a few days and looking at stuff on the internet. And it's like, that was Alex Ansari just like within his first year of recording videos. Those are just the thoughts off the top of my head plus some research that I did and some reference points that I made. Like the idea that the original War of the Worlds broadcast may have been like an early Project Blue Bean test of how the American people would respond to being told about an alien invasion right as Germany was working on their own anti-gravity systems prior to them being imported into the United States by NASA. Warner Von Braun and, and other things to follow. See, all this was taking place early as, of course, they were building the nuclear family and the baby boom generation came up. You see, and as this baby boom generation came up, baby, come back. You can blame it all on me. And for the most part, in a lot of our opinions, including mine, some of the best love songs are from that 60s, 70s, 80s generation. Although as a 10 year old, I thought the song The Wander was a little bit, oh, I'm the top of man who likes to walk around. I moved from place to place. I would talk about a song where it's like, God, how about being a proud man whore? I got a rose on my chest and I got girl left on my right. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I thought that was weird at 10. Uh, to, you know, the codependent breakup songs as perhaps people were coming down from perhaps some smack or cocaine. If I can't have you, I don't want nobody, baby. I've always been complimented, by the way, on my singing voice. Always, always requesting the audience on karaoke. But there's something about that era in which the media influenced male-female relationships. People like Alex Ansari came to life. Actually, by doing the math, February 25th, 1980, ah, I was conceived in that wild summer of 1979 in a city like Portland, Oregon. And that was a much better city during much better times. Things didn't work out between my parents uh, after I was born. But it was, you know, the time, space, reality, all the energetic components. I don't necessarily believe that everybody should be married and living together the rest of their lives. You know, there's a part of us that really it just has... Um, whether it be a job to do or something that just happens, but the act of procreating or creating life through the act of sexuality. And there are certain times in which uh, I, I believe that soul groups are born and people might be similar, a little bit similar in some of their personality types. Whether we're looking at one particular chart or we have the Chinese calendar where there's like, for example, the monkey. And I was close friends with another person that had that under their uh, Chinese astrological sign. And he was born several decades earlier than I in 1956. Um, there's so much more to relationships between people. There's so much more to what people are. There's so much more to learn about these perceived differences and differences of personality. Me just giving you just a few uh, ideas behind it. Time in which we were born, for example, a more popular understanding place that we were born then of course there's the makeup of the soul and the makeup of the soul can override programming i believe a, an amazing soul often often amazing souls are uh, are coming out of households that are troubling to say the least i can go on and on with with what that means where well, there's abuse in the home and things of that nature and yet that person could go on to help other people or to be better to their own children, if they end up with any, or their own spouses than perhaps what they saw growing up. And then some people never grew up seeing people in a healthy relationship. In their lives, only to never really have one of their own you know i I'm, I'm getting into that to say that we are here to override the codes of the matrix kind of like bruce lipton talks about epigenetics you can find old episodes on the art bell show basically mind over matter and this is something that i think 
I can come back to you after some more thought. But the whole idea is mind over matter. Despite what the media has done, despite what our childhoods have been like, uh, despite some of our negative experiences with other uh, members of the opposite sex, people that we've been involved with in the past, that it turned out really negatively. That doesn't mean that we can't override that. And what does that even mean by override? Um, survive the trauma ourselves and continue to be a, a healthy person. You know, um, by that, being able to still see the good in life, the good in someone else, to still be able to trust someone else, to love someone else, to love again, even after our heart was broken, the idea is to heal ourselves and keep moving forward. But there's so many different, like, spokes to larger wheel of how to resist this contamination of this image of ourselves and others. Uh, the media contamination over male-female relationships also includes the idea that someone isn't someone unless they have someone by their side. And these things could also have deeper connotations where the media is just what we kind of, it may be our focal point, the media influencing this, that, and the other. But again, the media isn't this all intrusive, all seeing eye that's outside of ourselves, them, they, the media. Uh, you can even say the world, which we're a part of. If we can be a part of the media, and today we can be the media. Going back to that, don't blame the media, be the media. We can be a part of a process of discussing mindful relationships in a clearly fallen world. Even if it seems like we're talking about science fiction, and to be frank with you, it does feel like I'm sharing something that some of you might think is science fiction. I'm talking about like, okay, let's just scrap the Earth concept and what's happening here, and let's just repaint ourselves a different Earth-like planet where, yes, there's men and women that have sexual genitalia but the way that they are interacting the way that they're choosing who to bed down with the way that they're maintaining their relationships the way that they're maintaining their societies the way that they're consuming their resources it is so different it is so different you know the the way the women aren't repelled by nice guys it is so different it is so different and that's a global structure i'm going to bring this back i believe i'm onto something that the actual human brain design is faulty. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Human sexuality, it, it has an origin in, in the brain. Now, whether or not you believe it all comes from a, a, a Darwinian reality or that there's been intervention in our development. Many people believe that. Intervention in the human development, in human civilization. And through that, there's something in the wiring. This is a teaser. We'll, we'll come back to it. But it brings out that dominator and that which wishes to be dominated, whether we're talking about a heterosexual couple or gay guys or gay girls <laughs> put on a strap on. There's something about the nature of duality and sexuality where one is mounting and one is being mounted. And there's a lot that dances around hierarchy, even in just normal relationships, uh, including the workplace. It's about who's being mounted and talking down to and who's doing the mounting, who's the boss. There's so much of even like dominant sexuality that seems to be like built into the physical matrix itself. It's, it's bizarre. So I don't think that this is like the ultimate reality. I think this is a fallen world that we've fallen into. And then if we confuse the nature of base sexuality with what is the highest, we're going to be uh, confused. We're a soul in human form that has an opportunity to evolve beyond, right, monkey see, monkey do. You know, and I, I think that it is, in some cases, almost an act of the divine to bring um, several souls together that get this. I mean, there are some amazing men and women that are out there that have contributed amazing things to society throughout time that have been single throughout most of their lives, both men and women. And there are reasons why things like being a monk or going off grid or leaving mainstream society, which is something that was done commonly 1,000 years ago in the middle of Europe. Were you there? How do you know you weren't? 
And how do some people know they weren't the actual villagers that were actually burning down the homes of those that were actually just trying to simply help people with their philosophies, but were called witches during that particular day and time? Oh, it wasn't just females. It wasn't just females. And so there, were, there was a period in time in which people were harmed and exiled from thinking outside the box of the control structure of that day and time and speaking out against it. Not, not even necessarily like picking up arms against it, but speaking philosophically with their tongue about the nature of how that control structure controls the people. People that have gone down that road have suffered throughout the course of human history. I don't know if there's a schedule planned for that to change. So I want people to keep this in mind that our lives are about liberating ourselves possibly from this type of a fallen world. It isn't, it isn't just about getting laid and having, oh, those are my kittens. Oh, those are my kittens, kittens. Those are my kittens, 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 kittens. Look at that DNA. Woo! I think that there's another purpose to our existence. And I think that that is something that we should ponder on. Till next time, I'm Alex Hanson reminding you the path of the ultimate truth and place of power still lies within.